learning the guitar, I said this the other day, learning guitar, not as hard as people think. Uh, it's one of those minute to learn, lifetime to master things. What I, what I practice doing, and it's much more of a mental practice, and I, I cannot stress enough for other guitar players to practice doing this, is practice thinking from the idea first instead of what the guitar offers you. Get out of the geometry. It's not whack-a-mole. Like just because they're here, just like you know words, doesn't mean you just start mashing them. You can, just like it's fun to freestyle. It's fun to come up with ideas. It's fun to riff with your friends. But in terms of like coming up with statements on a guitar, for me, it's not looking at this based on what do I know scale-wise. Uh, so, so I'll show you. Like Sometimes I'll just sit down and go, we'll pick A, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll just go, I'll, I'll make this up. But in my head, I'm keeping time and I'm hearing a certain uh, rhythmic bed and, and a harmonic bed so that I don't have to overplay on the guitar. And I just focus in. <laughs> Try to remember what you played. And just that foot, keeping, mm, mm, mm. Okay. and you just keep swimming and exploring and tracking in your brain what works and what doesn't, and you get so much more, I feel like, out of, mm, 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 mm. and don't use the guitar as this full bore thing to just bang out as much guitar music as you can bang out. You know what I mean? Like that's what I practice to try to get better and better at playing the melody in my head, not just, you know. You know. There's so many. That's there if you want it, but I'm always trying to break out of the box, you know. And so a lot of what I've been playing lately is really vocal. And the way that you can get more vocal in your playing is very simply, number one, listen to a lot of blues singers. If you want to be a blues guitar player, listen to a lot of blues singers. Most of what I play are, well, half of what I play, I think I'm thinking about someone singing. And B.B. King Live at the Regal. It's like a better, well, it's both an incredible vocal record and a guitar record. But at first you're like, what a great guitar record. And then you realize his singing is just as good as his guitar playing. They're the same thing. One is just vocalized and one is played on the guitar. And you start to get these microtonal things. So. Uh, Tonal stuff. Do you hear how that's not correct in terms of being perfectly in pitch? That's all very vocal stuff. It's not. It's. Not. That's.
that's highly out of tune, but so is a voice when it's in the middle of wailing. <laughs> the whole time and it is the most blessed sounding thing in the world steve miller also does it you can hear that you know Also working on things like a which is almost like a yodel. Right? Right? It's like a little break in the voice. Also, tap after a bend, which I really, really like. What? That means.
we'll just hit tap. Uh, we can do right. Just one. I think as a general rule, you want to move up in pitch during your solos, not down. Uh, because I think there's a sense of growth in the narrative of a solo when you go higher. Jerry Garcia was great at that. I think most great guitar players instinctively understand that if you're going to solo for a while, Doyle Bramel II is the master of if, you know, there's a song in C. Now, this is going to be a lot of you that I'm going to sound like right now. And I'm not putting anyone down, nor am I putting down the legends before who have done it. But it's meant to make a point about choices, about what I'm talking about, where you're supposed to, where I think you should let the note go higher as you go. If you start too high, you sort of go, eh, where do you go from there? If you've got two solos, and if you're in a scenario where you don't know when your solo is going to be over, a lot of times the singer or the, you know, the head musician gives you a solo and you're, you have to hand it back or they take it back. If you're like... It's very hard once you're... That's okay. again where are you going you can go okay what if you have to go around again you're sort of running out but if you were how long do you have before people get tired of that you have the whole neck left. So that's how I think about a solo. And then a lot of the time I think about being lyrical. So let's say you go out on the floor. It's always cool to start soloing on the floor, but you go like this. Right? All right, what, 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 whatever. Because here's why. Because you already just went into the high hole. You know, so I've already gone. Da, 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 da. Dynamically, I've now shut everything down before that. By doing that, anything lower than that is now a letdown. I, I can't go. You're moving backwards. All of a sudden, you've used your trick. You've used your. Da, 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 da. If you were a singer and you came out like that. People would go, whoa! Someone like first, first notice. And you go, all right, that's impressive to some who go, wow, that's neat. But you don't get a lot of time after that, right? So here it is again with the pacing. So you need to go to the one. All right. You gotta get there, you gotta. All right, here's where you pace it out.
topping it. So you go, we'll go around again. Now I want, that's how I want to hear another one. I've spun you around. I've spun it around and I didn't go to the top all of a sudden. And I, just because it's so great to hear this man play. Tomo, take your time like you've never taken your time and see if anybody walks out because they're bored. That's, that's the best I already played. <laughs> Here's where I'm at with my playing right now. I'm into playing lead lines that suggest chords without having to play chords. So we all, as guitar players, are looking for things to play over. Jam tracks or making, you know, making tracks we can play on or getting together with bands and Lately, I've been into how you suggest the chords of playing. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. How you suggest the chords that you're playing without having to play the chords. So, and this is actually how I practice for Dead & Company, is I have these, uh, like a song like Sugary. It's the easiest song that I can use to suggest this to you. So it's B to E, right? <laughs> So that's all it is. So you could go E. You can keep playing the chords underneath it, which is sort of the conventional way to look at it. But for me, what I practice is now um, suggesting those chords without having to play them. So it would sound like this if you take the chords out from under it. soloing and defining the chords underneath the solo by the notes that you play. And I'm starting to learn that if you hit the right, if you almost hit the note of the chord that you're moving to, people can feel it, you know? That's 
that's over that. But you don't have to really play that all the time to imply it. Anyway, I just sit around and do this stuff all day and crack codes. When you're playing in a blues solo, the best soloists are defining the chord change. So you're in, you're in C. Accentuate the chord change. That, to me, is really the final frontier of being a guitar player. So. I'm not going to play any chords, but I'm going. You're going to know when the chord changes. Also, it's a 12-bar blues, but you're going to feel when the chord changes. changes are and really and I'm not even sure exactly what I'm doing I'm hoping that what I'm doing is in the key and it is you'd know if it wasn't and and so much of the pentatonic scale is shared over the three chords that you're playing when you're normally playing a one four five progression but if you can really isolate the notes of those chord changes that are unique to those chord changes then you really are so satisfying to the ear what would you say the William Hung of popular guitarists oh listen I ain't talking shit as a guitar player I have no shit to talk as a guitar player. Um, DM me later. No. And also what I'll do is try to play the same riff up and down the neck, you know? Like you can go, which is also like, like a, well, like there's also, different because the geometry is different so instead of you, have, you know so if you're in, in, in this a thing you go that's a very kind of i'm studying like a doyle bramwell the seconds playing you know anyway i'll sit around and do all that stuff Here's what I do, I do this thing on um, a tremolo. I don't do it all the time, but I've started working it. You don't wanna do it too hard. It works if your springs are pretty pretty tight so your tremolo piece is down pretty flush with the guitar, but if you get that, right? And it's different than a whammy bar because a whammy bar is gonna bring the pitch 
down and back, down and back. By palming the tremolo, you're going to get up and back, up and back. And it kind of simulates tape warble, right? And it also simulates natural vibrato on a slide. So if you start playing the kind of guitar that like Elmore James or Earl Hooker or, you know, a lot of people would, uh, did Earl Hooker, Earl Hooker play a slide? Yeah. Um, you get a, uh, you get this kind of slide feel. So you, instead of going, And then I play with a pick and hide it in here as I play, so you'll see me do do the picks actually there. So I can go. So I want to show you where I switch. It's okay to mess up because you don't know where you are anyway. I haven't done anything. I'm just playing in the pentatonic. It's all really... That's all it is, but it's right hand and it's internal timing and you build your timing up. It's a fundamental thing. Instead of going through all the different scales, whoa, 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 whoa. I want everyone to go home and whatever your instrument is, just do the simplest thing and just feel it. Just get a feel going. so much more listenable because I'm, I'm phrasing it because of those dynamics. There are really interesting dynamics. And this is what I want to get to with dynamics for a moment. What, what you're doing right now is you're learning the entire shape of everything, all things, the shape, the entire perimeter of the room. But if you start shaving it off and choosing what you like, you get a, you get a dynamics thing. So I can go, I can, I can be late on the four, on the two and the four, the snare. Uh. 
It's all a feel thing. It's all a feel thing. Here are the good, ooh, hear how that major third comes in over the minor, so I can bring, listen to that third. I think I did it wrong. That's it. The major third is your friend. I'm gonna go back to the minor, you'll hear the difference. Here's another thing to practice. Last time I did this, I think I was a little all over the place. I said I was gonna teach and I didn't really teach. I was sort of just flossing the whole time. Here's a really great practice. Everyone's always practicing playing in minor pentatonic and bending, right? But practice bending from a minor into a major. So that, that was going in from a minor third to a major third. So, now most people go, which isn't really a band, it's sort of a, a adding a flavor to it. But, which is an A. Right? That'll teach you a lot about getting your bend in the right place because a major third is completely unforgiving. Bending in minor is much more forgiving. You can kind of go as, as crazy as you want to go, but there's only one right way to play a major third over something. That's too high, too, too sharp. That's also what gives a slide sound to stuff. bend everything up. You can also do this math where you just go a step below everything and sound a little more like a slide. Right? So you can bend up to stuff. You can also make mistakes and bend after mistakes if you're an A. You know, maybe I wanted to go and I went if you're playing alone, just throw it into make it a four chord, you know? It's really about following your ear around. Um, so that's what I do is sit here as we, as you know, and just find these ways to simplify as much as I possibly can. And we'll get out of A, we'll go to D, you know?
And what's really important, I think, is that my uh, major notes inside of a minor pentatonic are so refreshing. King of it, Jerry Garcia. Yeah, and bend the first finger bends, you know? You always think of, like, if we're an A. People always think of that as, like, you can't, this is the ground, you can't go lower than that. That's actually a, a really big tip for guitar players. Like, when you learn the pentatonic scale, the one note that's this, the one fret that's the same on all of them is this. They're all... So you just grow up thinking you just can't do anything with that. These are the ones you bend. And you bend, bend. But you got... Right? So listen to that. Right? So that's the thing. And that this is the BB King. Won't you tell me the reason why? So that's interesting. These are called double stops when you play two notes at a time. Like you hear guitar players if you're in um, pick D, right? You hear? That's just fretting two notes at the same time. With, you know, you might, you're like a beginner guitar player, just kind of do all that. But you can actually pull it in a way that gives you uh, <laughs> you can pull that to a third. It's kind of a pedal stealish thing. When you pull one a little harder than the next one, guitar players, try that. Try that shit. Yeah. Not even do it. So again, like if you start doing it too much outside of the song context, it starts getting all. Yeah. Also do like The slap pick thing from Stop This Train. Yeah, you know, I didn't invent the slap picking thing, but I definitely popularized it, and it's in a lot of songs, especially on electric guitar. It doesn't really sound really good. Like, slapping an acoustic guitar works because it's a percussion instrument. You know, the fact that it's hollow and made of wood, it kind of has a conga sound in some way. And on an electric, it just, it just slaps the magnet of the electric guitar, and it, to me, it doesn't sound really good, especially when there's spring reverb on. Now, I'm guilty of having done it, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you wanna to get to be a better guitar player? Take out those hits, because those things are sort of training wheels for, uh, for rhythm. So, for instance, if I was going, uh, Sometimes I'll do that with a drummer because I think it sort of adds to the snare. Or if you're doing it. 
Yeah, that's what you'll hear. If that stuff you're doing so that you hold yourself to the tempo better, but you should practice just going. Even if you want to take, keep it with your palm, keep the time. You can't hear that. But this stuff, wet, wet, it sort of gets a little strange. I'm trying not to do that again on the guitar ever. I did it on so many records and, and played so many nights where I was keeping time like that, and I just don't like putting on records anymore. Like, I, I did it so much, and I can actually, like, I won't go so far as to say, like, I, can, I ever sit in the car and listen to the radio and go, like, oh, they ripped me off. But there are times I go, like, that's a me thing when I hear, like, like a... I have that thing. Right hand rhythm playing is what keeps uh, what keeps you able to play for hours alone. If you have a right hand, if you I didn't ever practice with a metronome really, but I practiced with records, and then started to get good playing with other players and getting rhythm going. Uh, if you keep the rhythm going, you can play forever, and people want to keep hearing it. You know. <laughs> So here's, here's the shit that I want to talk to you about. So the only reason that certain things happen on a guitar musically is because they're there shape-wise. And I've gone through my playing and I've gone through the music I listen to, and it's not a bad thing, it's a preference, but the guitar in its, the science of it has sort of led it into a certain sound in terms of what people play on it. Not always because it's what they want to say, but it's because it's the shape that's available to them on the guitar. And it has inspired, and I think it's a good thing, it's inspired guitar players to come up with ways of playing things based on where they're available to you. So there are these things, they're like guitar-specific notes that I don't even think people know they don't love as much as they do, but it's just there and it's become part of the vocabulary. And the one I hate, even in my own playing, and I did it only one time. You could actually run it back and go, Mare's right, he did it one time. And I'll do it every once in a while. If you're in A, right? A. It's da da do And it's it's it happens in music, but on a guitar. I just don't like it. And I also don't like people hit it too hard. But it's usually it's kind of a fun thing to do in your hand but it's not that cool to listen to. I just don't like it. That is a guitar only thing. You wouldn't, 
on a, on a piano, you wouldn't think to do that, or you can't bend it on a piano, but even vocally, you know, you can do it, you know, sometimes, but it becomes like a cliche, you know. Mm -hmm. Never made me happy. I'm not knocking anybody who does it. I'm just saying, investigate everything you play and find out, is it because it's a note you want to play or is it because it's in the jungle gym and it's fun to climb around and, and, and you're just doing it because it's there. That's what I'm trying to take out. So, check this out. This is what you should be playing. This is how you should be playing guitar. Put it on it didn't do. feel so good and I'm not saying that I'm not trying to be like Bob Ross just being like but tree that like you can do this at home but whatever level you're at as a guitar player sit and just choose and play your choices here first instead and it's always fun I'll still riff around play play what's up here for like try to come up with what it is you want to do it's like Photoshop it's like you might you could be good at Photoshop but if you don't know what picture you want to see what what's Photoshop for so you start developing that sense of what your vision for your song, the next thing you want to hear is, and learning the guitar that way, or learning whatever instrument you have that way. Also, I may be completely wrong in that I'm uh, sort of forcing my age on other people, and you're still at the age where you just want to keep crushing, and I'm all for it. But work this in as a thought process every once in a while. With what you learn, learn to implement it in your own way. Learn the function of a scale, and then just sit, and slow, and even if it's with a metronome. I'm playing music right now. As long as you're feeling that, you train yourself to feel that without having to burn, 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 burn all the time, it'll be, you'll just be so much of a better player for it. And that's all, I, that's what I was doing before I signed on was to practice that stuff. Throw that shit up a half note. Like everyone was playing in the box, just break the box up. Like if you're in D. You're always going, every, every guitar player knows, right? But throw it up a... Right? Yep. It's the way a, a vocal would do it. So the, I'm just trying to get, like my ears are tired. 40, I've been playing guitar since I was 13, so my ears are dug in by certain things that I don't want to hear anymore. I don't, I don't get angry if I hear them, but I'm trying to create things that are inside of the grooves that have been dug into my ears. And we listen to back to those old great singers, old great blues singers, listen to Aretha Franklin uh, sing. It's what you would call by ultra modern standards pitchy, but no, 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 oh dear, no. Um, when they're when they're slightly sharp, that, that's where the emotion comes from, you know? Won't you tell me the reason why? Uh, won't you tell me the reason why? 
You know, won't you tell me the reason why that tail is not? Won't you tell? It's won't you tell? And those are pitches way in between these frets, which only work in half steps, right? So that's the fun shit, right? For me right now is is like. Jimmy Vaughn, of course, is like super masterful at it, especially vocally. How did I move from open chords to scales and improvising? That is a fantastic question. So open chords are chords where basically you're playing down here and you're using the nut of the guitar to, to establish the, you know, the, uh, the lowest the lowest note of each string you're not fretting. So you're basically, that's open. Right, and D has an open D and you're fretting out here. But eventually you move to something called bar chords. So this right here is the nut. That dictates like, this is where the note begins on a guitar. So if you're playing an E, that's open, that's open, that's open. So basically you play an F this way, or that's a bar chord. Basically, this finger's acting like that is, and just up. So that's where guitar is fairly easy compared to piano because it's completely transposable. So if you learn something in one key, you can play it in any key you want because the, the, the relative um, shapes don't change as you move up and down. So it's, to answer your question, you have to get finger strength to be able to play in the first place and, and develop calluses. That that wouldn't even be a thing, although you could if you wanted to, but that's the this is the Mel Bay chord. That only involves pressing three strings down. Why? Because these open strings are tuned, that, that, that takes care of it. But if you want to play that up here, it's really, or this is the approach. To be super technical about it, wait, that's not it. How would I be playing a, Oh, I can't do it that way. Never mind. Okay, so this would be like a, an A. And that's a B. And that's a C sharp. And that's a D. So there, once you learn it, you can move it around. Then getting into solos, you've established understanding the roots if you know that that's G and that's A. Basically, you're learning all the notes for each fret on the low E. And you move out from there. But you know that's a G and that's an A, it's the same shape. That's a G minor, you can do this one. A minor, same shape. So you, so if you learn a shape in one key, you can play it in any key. And then you take the blues scale and pentatonic scale stuff and you can understand the root. So that's A, you're right. Then you, then you plug in what a pentatonic scale is. So this is always A, that was B. different than B. So there you go. That was just, but that takes a really long time to play with that finger and not have it hurt. It will hurt and you will have lines through it or you look like an egg slicer here and you just learn to, to be all right with it. Um, Tips on playing bass lines while playing. Yeah, what a wonderful question. So whenever you're playing, just understand, well, bass, there's a couple ways to look at it. Um, playing bass lines like, like walking bass lines, you know. Right. sort of just walking the roots up around so whatever the chords are you sort of walk the roots up but you also learn it it's a little bit like dance dance revolution it's not really sort of playing off the top of your head but understanding what key you're in every time you solo 
is a really good way to keep the bass. I, I like whenever I play a song that I don't know, but someone goes like, "Play this song." I always think about the bass first, because um, the bass will define everything. It'll tell you what the chords are. It'll tell you. You got to understand the root. I feel like that that can't be stressed enough. You have to understand the root of things. So I'm always aware of where I am. So I'm, we'll pick a different key. We'll pick C. <laughs> Add this bass line. I kind of see the. So what is that? That's one, minor, minor three, minor third, but still four, seven. So whenever you hear me do this thing in slow dancing, where I'm going like, you know. You hear that? Uh, there's this video of me playing through an old two rock, that video, where I'm sort of going. That's the closest I kind of come to sweet picking. So that is actually comes from uh, comes from uh, Robin Ford. And Robin Ford would be like. And he would go like a, not even that fast. He would do that. So it's called like sort of like borrowing, like elongating one note and making up for it on the next note. What I'm gonna show you actually involves no new learning if you're at an intermediate level when it comes to blues playing. So the first thing I wanna show you, and let's pick the key of uh, C. Everyone thinks about pentatonic. That's all pentatonic. Now, the first thing they teach you when you learn how to play solos is that's minor pentatonic. And that this four frets below, really three frets below, is the major pentatonic, and it's the same shapes. And so the thinking is this is blues. And this is major. different sounds. We've talked before about mixing up major and minor, which is cool, you know, like. So that's both, right? It's not. That's major. Um, I'm going to show you how to play minor pentatonic in the same spot, you play major pentatonic. Now this, maybe some people are like, duh, we already knew this. I'm gonna come clean and say, I never really thought about this until the last couple years. So you're in C, and I'm sorry that the screen is flipped for the selfie camera, but. So this idea, that's the pentatonic. 
I want you to think of the C across the neck as the equator. And this is sort of above ground and this is sort of below ground. So everyone is always thinking about, here's C, everything happens above it. What I think is really interesting is, here's C, let's be symmetrical and move out this way and out this way. And the way you would do that is go, instead of, you're really just moving, so I'm going to show you what that's like. This is playing a minor pentatonic in C, but in that same area as a major. but you're playing it in minor and what that means is that the ergonomics of it are flipped and I'll show you what I mean. So a lot of what guitar players play is based on what's available to them in terms of hammer-ons and pull-off. <laughs> but there's all these, it gets inverted when you go uh, So take this. shaped that way in terms of kicking off so we've all done that if you want to get around it or versus it's so much fun so if we're in C I'm gonna play everything underneath that equation capo you can move that anywhere you want you can take it off at any time so I really wanted to get into that first so <laughs> what that also does is helps connect all the minor pentatonics on the neck so if you're in C a lot of people are like and they immediately go you know that boo child spot but if you use that reshaping of the major pentatonic you got you have it in the standard spot you just went So I'm going to jump over it. But if you reconstitute that major pentatonic scale as a minor, then now you have that much more to do. So that's sort of the chapter one of it all, is... It's just a different flavor to play with. Because 
it's, you can tell, your ear can tell that's not a standard shape. Even though the notes are pretty much the same, that's really fun. So let me inspire you, if I may, that you're never too old to learn a new trick because my hand, I've been playing for, I don't know, what is it now? 20, almost 30 years. And when I first, 2015, started going through this music with a guitar in my hands, I couldn't, this, this, this wouldn't do that. This finger wouldn't do that. This wouldn't, this, you know, I played like, but I didn't, I didn't know. I lit, muscle-wise, ergonomically couldn't do it, so I had to teach myself. I really walked around with like the grip master and doing all that stuff and trying to, you know. Yes, I have to move my, I have to move my thumb to the back of the, I have to move my, back, my thumb to the back of the neck to be able to, to support that. You can never, I don't think you could wrap your thumb and play linear that way. You kind of have to play like they teach you, like they teach you. <laughs> 